Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Middle Earth: Shadow of Mordor. I've rejiggered my uh, setup, so I'm on the other side now. First, I'm resurrected by a wraith. Now I am working with an orc. What could possibly be next? We must use the weapons of our enemy against him. The orcs hate each other almost as much as they hate us. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, now where? This. Climbing the ranks. Shattered memories. Ah, uh, don't bring back the. Actually, no. Shattered memories is all right. And what's over here? The outcasts. That's kind of a side quest. So this is a new thing that we can do. We can interrupt the feast of this captain. Uh, this guy attempt to, you know, get more dudes into his individual band. Uh, or just come find that guy. But I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna do that. Okay, cool. Sorry, I got hung up there for a little. Do we have that one yet? I don't think we do. Did you just see that? No. That's my imagination, I Actually, no, we must have this one, right? Yeah, because we can fast travel to it. So this is, like, Mordor is, like, I like this view of Mordor where, like, it's pretty bad, but it's not as bad as it is in the movies, you know? Like, you can conceivably see people living here, to an extent. I mean, as long as they're orcs. Where are they at? More rat bag. Sorry again about the long episode last time. You glob. Let's try it then, eh? There's an imposter among us! I did that joke already. Alright. It's go time. Ah, uh, yeah. You love a big old uh, fancy looking arch. These are Ithildin, Star Moon, forged of Mithril. They hold memories of the ancient past. The knowledge within may be fair or ill. Where's the next? All the way over there, huh? I can climb that, no problem. The dark scum are crying again. It's not like this work is hard. The 
They should be happy they have a chance to do something useful. <laughs> oh man. Big kill from the rafters, huh? Unfortunately, oh, that's Brog. Brog, elite captain, can be damaged. Yeah, he's got a lot of good stuff on him. No wonder he's an elite captain. Hey guys, what's going on? Yeah, one thing that's really cool about the Nemesis system is how random people... Like, this this all happens to randos, you know? Like, they can just get stronger. The twin, eh? Pardon me, sir. That ain't good. I've been poissoned. Chiefs are the most powerful in the Uruk forces. Captains aspire to become war chiefs. Some will murder, assassinate, and backstab their way to the top. Others will gain favor or protection by serving war chiefs as bodyguards. This connection indicates that Brog is the bodyguard of an unknown war chief. Let's pay him a visit. Mog, the other twin. So, Brog the twin and Mog the other twin. Uh, he's 13 power. And you can only get intel on the big guys, on war chiefs, by interrogating captains or worms. When you draw out a war chief, all the bodyguards will also be there to defend them. So if his bodyguards are captains, you can go kill those captains and they won't be there. You can also uh, put poisonous friends in there. Like if you have somebody who's on your side that you put in a war chief's like bodyguardery, then you can be like, hey, how about this? And then when the time comes, they can get backstabbed. And the fight is not, you know, an army of orcs against you. It's you and your army of orcs against a war chief. Which is really, really cool. And the fact that, like, these... any Literally anyone in this game can become a war chief is so cool. Um, orcs have XP. They have their power level. And they get levels for killing you. When they kill Talion, when they kill you, they rank up and can become war chiefs. They can become captains. In order to draw a war chief, perform a stronghold mission. These will be located near the stronghold. Remember, view the strengths and weaknesses to plan your attack. Uh, combat finishers and ranged attacks. So gnarly. Talion is so wide, which is something I like. 
is over. He's very obviously like physically built. Very well then, I'm glad you just popped in quick. I thought we had some, Ranger! Sorry, I was fiddling with my light. A backstabbing bodyguard? I'll take care of one of the war chiefs for you. You do the other four on your own. Then we'll meet at the training camp, right? I'll make sure the war chief is there. You're ready for him. <laughs> what do you say? You make sure you keep your head on your neck this time. Yeah, I don't. Well, that's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I feel like there are like way more like cute and fun orcs in the main story, but there's still a lot of like fun orcs here and there. So yeah, because Ratbag is so crappy, he is pretty weak. And so we have a rank six guy in there where most of them are in the double digits. This Ratbag led us up the chain of command in spite of himself. He has a gift for failure. Hmm. Nature's Wrath. Two elf shots on a kill while riding a monster. To the death. 46% focus for shank grab kills. Oh yeah, all the percentages for shit is random as well. I'll get stealth because I end up using stealth a lot. The bow ends up being my least used thing. I may as well just become immune to poison. It almost became a problem last time, so if we can just avoid that happening a second time, that'd be great. Oh, the pause, pardon et moi. Let's head on over and see Gollum. They're trying to do like a multi-threaded thing with the story, but I feel like it's more just like the story is taking turns, you know? Wow, I've got some good stuff. Uh, hmm. This is all that I can get. I need the story to unlock these, so. Five out of 20 main missions. Outcast Rescue, Sword Legends, Bow Legends. So these are all, like, special challenges that you do. Relevant to the story. They're like, oh, this is the story of some guy's cool sword that he had. Oh uh, yeah. May as well. There's a really cool, there's a really like, I say cool, but it's not cool. It's pretty lame in fact. But um, in, I think it's, Sorry, I'm just rearranging my desk here. I want to have my ring light a little nearer and a little brighter. There we go. Uh, in Lord of the Rings, Orlando Bloom did a few interviews where he's like talking about... Um, he's like talking about his, uh, his face in some things. Because sometimes Legolas looks like a total goof. Yeah, what the hell. Uh, and, like, he's talking about getting a new bow in um, Galadriel's forest. Uh, and he's like, a new bow in the movie. And, like, he talks about this in this interview where he's, like, trying to summon up all of the, like... 
all of his memories of, of being a child on Christmas, and like that's actually how he's like fueling this, <laughs> like this this logic, you know. Standing next to each other, so. Hey, man. <laughs> okay. So who are we dealing with here? Oh, yeah, so because this guy ran away from me, but did, like, do some good damage to me, he's now tagged as, like, a revenge target because he kicked some good ass. So who am I dealing with here? Ratbag. Hmm. Here we go. Or no. Let's just get one of them. At the Black Gate, huh? There we go, gotta get it. We're your welcoming party. I love your tattoos or your face paints, bro. Those are sick. So Berserker Charges, of course, cannot be parried like that. Uh-oh, that ain't good. This is what happens when you try to play with a wild beast. Oh, yes. This god's life! Clear some guys out, huh? Okay. Oh, he's comboing me. That ain't good. Oh, it's so cool. Well, that ain't good at all. I don't even know where all my, like, health went. I think I've been, like, getting meleeed. Or, uh, getting ranged. So, yeah, you can have the Wraith come out. Uh-oh. So, you may notice that that dude's head has been bolted together and has a huge iron spike coming out of it. There's a big reason for that. I really want to finish this guy. There we go. Okay, these guys hopefully should not be a problem now. Luckily, I've got my sword of plus five getting his ass. Anybody? No. That's all right.
Uh, don't worry about that. Don't worry about what branding is yet. We'll we'll get to that. In here, right? Where are we heading? I think we got like pulled off the path. Okay. See, I love how it's just like, here's the guys, you know? Deal with them. The Iron Jaws. Sorry, I just realized that I wanna, I wanna, I wanna do what I'm doing. No, wait, I want to do that later. Where is it that I'm going? Here. I want to learn more about myself first. But yeah, I feel like... So, let's, let's break down what this game is. In The Hobbit, Bilbo gets the ring. There is then 50 years in between The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Why did Sauron not come after the ring while it was just sitting in Bilbo's pocket or in Frodo's drawer? You know? The logic is this. Talion running interference for 50 years made it impossible for Sauron to properly mobilize his army. And that's why Frodo has time to, like, wait on this whole ring business. And, and that's what the story is about. And that's kind of why I like it, because it does clean up some stuff in Lord of the Rings. Apparently some people don't like the second game as much. I have not actually played it yet. I played this game on my PS4. Um, and I'm now playing it on my PC. Uh, and I do really enjoy it. Strictly speaking. I'm going to turn this down. This is actually bothering me. So in Dark Souls, there's obviously the Lord of Fire. Uh, and until... And until you find the secret character, Koth, in Dark Souls 1, you would not know that there is a equivalent, a Dark Lord. Even though Dark Lord is so generic. Because, like, you know, how many fantasy things have a Dark Lord? A lot of them. A lot of them have a Dark Lord. So having a Dark Lord isn't really that special. And yet, like, it wasn't really a thing in Dark Souls. Because it's, like, linked to a hidden character, a secret character. And then trying to ascend that and become... And, of course, Sauron is the Dark Master, you know? Because he's, he's a big evil man. You got reach and you got sharp. What else is there? But it's, it's an interesting counterpart where like the dude in this game is the Bright Master. That's the Elf Lord we're stuck to. As opposed to the Dark Master. And uh, 
at some point he attempts to become the bright lord of Mordor. I I don't know if that's a spoiler. I mean, it is a spoiler technically, but if you know uh, a little of the Elvish languages, you might know uh, because Nani Ki Gelar Mordor, I believe, means I'm the bright lord of Mordor. And that's so interesting, you know? Because they do a bit of it, like, uh, with Galadriel talking about the ring, like, in place of the in, in place of a dark lord, you would have a queen. You know, and that dark queen is like a... Like, uh... Okay, yes, Gollum. I can't swing on him. This is kind of nice. When you ever seen grass in Mordor? Actually, this is something of a of a mini spoiler, but the vegetation in Mordor is actually like super lush and beautiful and nice and good. Uh, and the reason for this is because it's on a volcano, Mount Doom being a volcano naturally, and like having a uh, volcanic soil makes plants grow super awesome. Uh, which is why, you know, you can still have people live in, for example, Morrowind. Uh, and in Mordor, the same thing is true. You have a lot of good vegetation, so people can live there. And it's why the army can grow, because you, you need that sort of thing, you know? I don't know if you can recognize that sword. I think it might supposed to be something. I don't think it's Narcel, but I could be wrong. This guy, however, you might be able to recognize. That's Anatar, Lord of Gifts, gifting this fancy magic hammer so fine a gift. to our elfin lord here. This game has fantastic voice work, by the way, might I say. I pity Gollum maybe more than any other thing. Ah, oh, yeah. Ghoul. In the classical sense, a ghoul would be a corpse, you know? But in this sense, consider Nazgul. Which means like ring ghost or ring raid. So these things, you know, are these guys. When your hit streak is charged, press that to do a blim. So, get off me, guys, you know? Of course, there is a bit of uh, confusion about what a ghoul, a Nazgul even is. Because some people think that... Uh-oh. Some people think that a Nazgul is supposed to be just another term for Ringwraith, and that does make sense. That halfling golem will 
will betray us to the Black Hand the first chance he gets. He has no love for the Dark Lord. That creature has a part to play in the fate of all Middle-earth. I can feel it. Oh, I'm actually like... I think I'm booked up. That kind of sucks. Voice of power. All right, so where are we headed then to next? Uh, let's do this. Actually, let's go here, and then we'll do that and then that. There was a thing I was going to talk about. I literally might have to, like, straight up watch the video back to remember what I was, what my train of thought was. Oh, yeah, Nazgul. So, um, yeah, some people think that the big, like, dragon things, which are not dragons, dragons are their own thing, that the Nazgul ride are supposed to be Nazgul, but as you can hear in my voice, I think that Nazgul is just another term for Ringwraith, probably in Black Speech. Uh, Black Speech is the language of, Na of Mordor and what orcs typically speak. Um... You know, I swear, I think Professor Tolkien might be the only reason that I'm proud to have English heritage. Maybe even European heritage in general. Oops, pardon me. In the same way that, like, Metal Wolf Chaos is the only reason I'm proud to be American. Oh, wait, hold on. Pardon me, fellas. Let's go up. Oh yeah. I see in Starmoon like he filled him. He stone splinter from a past half remembered or half forgotten. All right. Then we're heading this way. New head cannon. Uh, Italian uses they them pronouns, not because he's non-binary, but because there's two of them in there. <laughs> uh, I think I'm funny. Okay, I'll start this next time. Uh, I'll cut this one a little shorter because I let the last one go a little long. But I've been Alfred. This has been Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Thank you all for coming. I've had a really good time. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Everyone, have a good day.